Well, good morning. Um, we're going to get started. We're trying to wait for uh, the other two board members. Uh, but we'll get started. <laughs> and uh, the first item is any board member having any comments? Uh, before, you, before I allow that uh, to happen, I wanted to bring before the board discussion about the master board training. We uh, were scheduled to have that on October the 11th and the location changed and shifted uh, to a point where we didn't feel it was advantageous for the board and the staff to travel that distance. And so now we're looking at some alternate days and the alternate days did not agree with everybody's calendar. So we're back at square one and there's been some discussion on whether or not we want to wait until 2018 to have the master board training uh, if we wanted to get a refund back and not do the training at all. And so I, I thought that uh, this would be a good opportunity for the board members to weigh in and give us a sense of what you all would like to do. So does anybody have any comments on it? I mean, I it might not be a bad idea to wait to 2018 if we're going to have a difficulty in scheduling it for everybody. Okay, so would that be 2018, the front end of 2018, or if someone had suggested waiting until after the elections? That worked too. I, it, okay. Ms. I'm fine. I'm fine with whatever, either way, whatever okay. works best for the board. Mr. Townsend? I, I like the idea of waiting until that after the election. That's, that's, that's fine. Mr. Wilson, are you okay with that? No, fine. Okay, I know Ms. Jackie is as well. All right, so then we will go back to FSBA and let them know that uh, we want to wait until after 2018's election and then see if they give us a refund or exactly what we'll have to do to, to rectify that. And I think that we're still trying to reschedule the retreat, the board retreat, uh, and that should be coming before you all very soon with some possible dates, uh, because we know the value and the importance of getting that on everybody's calendar. Um, Mr. Townsend, you got something? I do. Um, I have written, um, now that the first Tenerock report is, is public, I have written a very, very long and de de detailed piece um, I can't make any of you read it. Uh, I would hope that you, that you would. There's been a lot of time and effort put into it. Um, I think it's an incredibly important, far-reaching issue that I have only begun to talk about. I'm going to be talking about this in an ongoing way. Um, I have some questions related to it. The first is, what is Jason Looney's status right now? Um, do, we con do we envision that he will continue to be the principal of Tenor Rock High through the end of the year, uh, through next year? What, what is his status? His status now, he's the principal of Tenor Rock. For as long as he wants to remain there. Well, he's, you know, we, right now he is, the he is the principal. Looking at um, the information and lining up the allegations and the evidence against school board policy right now, from the investigation, it was everything was unfounded. So he's the principal of Turner Rock right now. Yes, sir. Actually, it wasn't unfounded. It was unsubstantiated. Unsubstantiated. Mm -hmm. um, I have some questions about that. Uh, the investigation actually says this, and let's. I mean, we can go ahead and get all, all this out now. The the woman who filed the complaint, her name is Brandy Garcia Blant, answered. Her career and life is ruined. Um, I'm interested in this piece from the investigation that says, Mr. Lo Looney stated that throughout the school year 2016 and 17, he had concerns about Ms. Blanchard's performance. He stated that he talked about the concerns throughout the year with his regional assistant superintendent, Attendant Tammy Daw Dawson, regional assist assistant superintendent, Tony Bell Bellamy, and school board, school board member, Tim Harris. I wanna know, is that true, Tim? Did he talk to you about his concerns with her performance before he fired her? I don't recall that, no. Okay, so the investigation is inaccurate when it says that. I haven't read the investigation. It hasn't been presented to the board. I just read it to you. I, the, the, the investigation, as you know, has not been presented to the board, so I have not, I'm not 
privy to it, you must be privy to something the board's not privy to. It was made public yes yesterday. So so that just just to clarify, clarify, you had no discussions with 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 Looney prior to her fire hiring. I don't recall. Okay. I don't know. Can, matter, can I can I ask you what part of your role? Excuse is me. In? Excuse me. First yep. of all, I'm 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 the chair right now, just for this minute, and I want to know from Mr. Bridges. If this is appropriate, because it seems to me like Mr. Townsend, you are cross-examining Mr. Harris, and I don't think this is the venue for that. I really don't. But Mr. Bridges need to help me understand, help all of us understand, is this a venue for this discussion? Madam Chair, you own the meeting and have the ability to d determine what is in order and what is not. It's certainly not a matter on the agenda today. To my knowledge, it is not currently a matter concerning which the superintendent has brought a recommendation to the school board. Uh, the board board members typically have a, a venue, a work session to talk about things that are on their minds and on their hearts. Uh, but if, if, if this is not the time or the place as the chair, you, you are able to set the, uh, the agenda and determine what is to be discussed at the meeting. Mr. Townsend, I yes. respect, let me, let, me, let me have my comments please. I respect your uh, ability to have your thoughts and your comments. I don't, I don't think that it's appropriate for you to be cross-examining any of the board members. I really don't. And so if you want to have comments about the investigation, I think everybody knows what you think. But if you want to have comments about the investigation, have at it. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna allow you to be back and forth with Mr. Harris because we're not gonna get anywhere. And I didn't come to Bartow this morning for this. I came here to go to the agenda and to make whatever decisions, if any, we need to make today, and then go and do what we need to do for the betterment of our students. And I think and hopefully everybody at this table came with the same intent. Yes. The questions of then then venue come up. Tim Harris went to Tender Rock High School. While the investigation was still open, he lectured the captive faculty at Tender Rock High School about how to vote, about his support for for, for, for Looney. I have the tra tra transcript. He made representations about the superintendent's position, which she has not clarified. Uh, those questions of venue are pretty important. If seeing as how we are all subject to the Sunshine Law, and I can't have this discussion with Tim in private uh, because that would break break that law. This is the only place to have it. I want to know what part of Tim's role he thought he was fulfilling by going and lecturing our employees at a school in front of a principal under investigation for sexual harassment on how they should vote. And Mr. Harris, do you want to respond to that? I'll respond once in this in this interview is over, if you will. Yes, sir. I did not request a meeting of the faculty for Miss Bird and myself to attend. There was not a faculty meeting called for us to speak. We spoke, or I did, because she was unavailable, at the end of his faculty meeting. I made that very clear when I spoke to him that this was just an opportunity for us to address the faculty to show support, not to call a special meeting in any way. At that time, this board had not been made aware that there was any ongoing investigation. For you to imply that I was aware of an investigation for which you had background knowledge because you were a Facebook friend of the person in question is incorrect. You can have your opinion and I'll have yours, but she's the, the one that makes decisions on staff, not the seven of us. Tim, on July 10th, you sent an email asking why Brandy Blanchard came to me and not, and not you. Correct, because that was a That was weeks was, ago. And that was a school in this district that I was elected from. I wanted to know if there was something that I should be aware of. And that person did not come to me, they came to you. And there was no referral to me so that I would be aware of it. 
What part of your role allows you to tell people how to vote that are our employees? How to vote? How do you characterize that? You said you, you gave characteristics of the type of person people should vote for. You talked about how you should vote at tell that me. meeting to tell our me. captain. To our captive em em employees. Captive? Yes, they were sitting there. They couldn't leave. Oh, yeah, they were free to leave if uh, they did not want to speak to me afterwards, and plenty of them did at, at the point. No, no, not while you were spe speaking. Plenty of the people had to leave for other meetings, and they were not available to finish up the meeting. But that's, I don't know. Give me specifics. You said you should never vote for someone who doesn't have. Uh, major board experience or some sort of nonprofit board experience. Certainly I will, you said that to a captive That group. is certainly something in my experience that is beneficial to someone who gets elected to public office. Right. And what right do you have to say that at a school to <clears throat> our employees who cannot leave? Board members speak at board at uh, school functions, so that's not unusual. Okay. So Okay, I'm not I, sure I, what I think your point is. I think I, well, I think the pub, the public can decide what the point is. I'm, I'm done. Well, no, no, I'm not. I, I have one, I have one other thing. This bird, Tim said specifically that you would have said that you would have gone there and and given your support for Looney, while the investigation was on ongoing. He said that specifically at the meeting. Is is that true? I support all of our employees, Mr. Townsend, just as I know the seven of you do. All of our employees, we support. Yeah, that's not an answer. Okay. You, well, you, it was. It was in. It was in specific I, relation to the investigators. I was not at the meeting, but I support all of our employees. Okay. okay. All right. The next item. Anybody else have any, Mr. Wilson? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I um, would like to take a moment and, and thank uh, Superintendent Burke for her leadership um, during Hurricane Irma. <coughs> And I tell you, this is a very emotional thing for me, as well as all of our staff. It was the response was just incredible. And it, it, as a school board member, I couldn't be more proud. Um, I uh, the day after the hurricane, I went to Chain of Lakes, and I wanted to visit all the schools in my district mm -hmm. that were shelters. And Victor Duncan put me to work, which was fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent I spent much of my time, most of time there and I didn't get a chance to go to the place but I, it was just beyond words remarkable um, what <clears throat> our school district means to our community in situations like that so I'm incredibly grateful to you and uh, to all of our staff for all the day. Okay. I, I just want to say I've been visiting <coughs> schools in my district just to see mm -hmm. them and I am so amazed that after this hurricane, the schools so quickly were back about the business of teaching our kids. I have, in, I have um, schools with all grades, and when you go into the classrooms, you would never know it. Every teacher is working. Uh, I am so impressed um, with what they're doing, with what the children were doing. Um, I just want to to thank you, but to thank our teachers yes. and our principals, because um, with the disruption that we had, um, you could not tell it. Um, a week or two after the hurricane, they're all back. And I really I, uh, don't know how the state grades these schools, because um, I see excellent teachers doing excellent work. and. Um, I was amazed. I don't see children not being attentive to what they're supposed to do. Um, so I just want to thank our whole staff because um, we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. I'm very proud of our schools. Absolutely. And, you know, that kind of effort requires um, exceptional leadership. And we certainly have that. But, but really, we had cafeteria workers who were there doing what they needed to do and being away from their family during that very difficult time. So. That kind of commitment is really remarkable. Mm -hmm. We should all be very proud of that. We'll point that then. I think I'll also, because the performance was so good and so selfless, I think there's going to be repercussions down, down the line as well. Uh, I mean, I think the public needs to understand that we are the Red Cross. 
in, in any me me meaningful way. Um, and I think our government is going to start to understand that as well. And, and, and so I, I, I salute the folks who were incredibly self selfless. Uh, <coughs> The shelter I was at, Mary, Mary Crawford at, at uh, Philip O'Brien. I don't think she ever left. Uh, worked herself almost to, to death um, on behalf of the public. And it is that kind of commitment that we have to support and protect. And I will, we'll, we'll do that. Yes, ma'am. Um, we had a coalition meeting yesterday and talked about a few pretty interesting things. One of them was hurricane relief. Um, the coalition is going to send, Orange County I believe has already sent a letter, but the coalition is also going to send a letter um, requesting um, specifically for class size, no penalties, at least through the end of the year while we get everyone situated, mm -hmm. um, a later FTE date. Mm -hmm and um, accountability, flexibility for exams, especially with those students that we'll be receiving from Puerto Rico. Um, I believe they said humanitarian flights start next Monday or Tuesday. Um, so once those start, we should be seeing many more students coming into this area. Orange County's already up over 300 students, and as of this morning, we are up 71. So um, I don't think we're gonna see that decrease. I think it's only going to increase once humanitarian flights start. Um, they do already in his executive in the governor's executive order from Friday. It's already allowed that if you have a five percent influx, you can request a later FTE up to nine weeks. Um, but a five percent influx for us is probably slightly more than we'll get. Um, I'm guessing that's probably about five thousand students, um, which that was kind of the concern across the board is that for the larger counties, a 5% influx is anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 kids, and most are expecting somewhere between two and 500. Um, so that was one of the things we discussed. We also talked about a couple bills that are coming up. Um, committee week started yesterday. Um, one specifically filed by um, Representative Cumby in the House and Stargell in the Senate is concealed weapons on campus um, for multi-use facilities, which is churches and schools, um, which is a little bit scary. It was filed before Las Vegas, um, so we that was part of the discussion was we don't know if that will have help it lose some traction, but it does have identical bills in the House and the Senate. Um, and then the Senator Rodriguez has filed mandatory retention, which removes the requirement of mandatory retention for third graders um, that don't score above a two on the ELA or meet a special cause exemption. Um, Hochul's still pushing a financial literacy requirement for graduation. Um, the way it looks this year, it'd be a half credit required for financial literacy and then instead of eight electives required, it would be 7.5 electives required, which is how they're trying to get around that. Um, and I believe that was, oh, we also discussed, um, Osceola County brought up the GKE, and they're pushing for, because right now, if you don't pass it after your first year, you can't continue to teach. Mm -hmm. So they're pushing for it to match the temporary certificate where you have three years to pass it. Um, and had just asked if there would be any other counties interested in taking that approach with the GKE, um, which of course then spawned discussion of how much it costs and other things. Um, but that's what Osceola County is looking to do. One of the board members from Lake County, I believe, teaches at UCF in their College of Education, and they're going from 10 to three regional teaching campuses this year, um, just because of how low their education program is because they now have to pass the GKE to graduate. Um, so that was a good conversation. That's all I kind of said one thing. Mm -hmm. um, we did apply for the waiver for it um, with the FTE. We applied for that. Um, I was on a conference call with the governor and commissioner on yesterday. So 10 counties right now have applied. We are one of the 10 counties that have applied. As far as when the students have influx with them coming in from Puerto Rico, um, I know that they're looking at the testing window and all of that. And we asked the question when we know about, you know, the grading and all of that. So they're waiting to see what happens 
according to the commissioner, the governor said that's going to be totally up to her. So she's waiting to see, you know, what happens, how many students we get. And I think um, that was high for Orange because um, Miami, Alberta said he, he has 200 right now. That saying we, were, we knew we were at 70, but after Tuesday, we're all looking at that can increase. So they've actually relaxed the requirements of enrollment for them, as well as for our teachers that we're looking at if the teachers want to come from that we can bring those teachers in and relaxing their requirements and how we get that basically we're going to look at a transcript and everything so they sent that information i'll make sure that you all get it as well thank you mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome anybody else all right so miss miss jackie uh, i would just request that we do the financial advisor after we do the school employment plan okay because miss cunningham wanted to be here for that i believe for the financial advisor? Yes. Okay, and the school improvement plan, um, and I know they have an hour here, Dr. Aitz, I know Ms. Barnes has these on here, but what I would like to say is with the school improvement plan, this is just a normal process. Each of the districts have their school improvement plans that's listed on here for you to review. It's just a formality that they are out there for you to review as for approval, and then they go to the State Board of Education. They're then placed on the website for, <clears throat> for everyone through the, um, the SIMS website is what they have on, out there. We try to make sure all the plans this year, they are aligned and they look alike. They're not doing multiple plans in one um, through the Office of School Improvement. And I think we have the time. It shouldn't have been an hour listed on there. Dr. Ace, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. I don't see Ms. Barnes here this morning. Um, this is a requirement by statute that the school board mm -hmm. reviews and approves them. Of course, when you're looking at 100, uh, schools within our district, it becomes uh, quite uh, a daunting task as a school mm -hmm. board member. member. Uh, but we've looked at these, uh, made sure that uh, for the schools, especially that are in turnaround, and the schools that have um, the turnaround plans uh, year two, or the turnaround plans two, or the top plan three that we submitted, uh, that they aligned. We also made sure that the Title I funds that are identified as funding initiatives within those school improvement plans, that they're aligned. Uh, so I think uh, really a very uh, much a team effort throughout the district uh, to, to turn in quality plans that uh, if a uh, school board member or a state board member pulled one of these up from one of our turnaround plan, one of our turnaround schools that uh, we would have um, a plan that we felt like that represented the work we were doing there. So um, uh, as of this uh, moment, uh, we feel like these are ready to go forward. As always, the school improvement plan is a living, breathing document as change, changes come about, but uh, they're current and aligned with the, the documents that uh, I've discussed. And one thing I would add is that these plans are not done just by the administrator. I know a lot of times school improvement plans have been something that the administrative team only writes and drives, but they are actually done with um, some of the teachers and the staff, and then they usually involve some of the community as they're doing moving forward. Um, but each year we have tried to group them to where we have your district plans underneath so that you can view your district plans in itself for um, to go forward. Mr. Wilson. Madam Superintendent, um, first of all, I, liked it. I noticed that there was consistency among mm -hmm. them. I think I, I uh, uh, applaud you for that. I think that's going to help mm -hmm. uh, streamline your process. and. Mm -hmm and uh, make the process a lot more simple. But this just is one of those mandates from the state. Yes, it is. It's just daunting. It's incredible, <laughs> honestly. And and I, I, I sometimes wonder when they think we have time to teach. Um, but it, when we talk about, oftentimes we talk about administrative costs, this is a, another example of, of, of money that we're spending administratively that we could be using for other things and, and we could do a very, a very thorough, comprehensive plan, school plan, with, without all of mm -hmm. these requirements. So, mm -hmm. uh, good job. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's a remarkable effort, but it, it's just unfortunate that, that those mandates exist and we have to pay to, to manage and, and make sure we're in compliance with those mandates. But I do appreciate, I think you, you're doing a great job in, in consistency. I think mm -hmm. that's going to help the process a lot. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Agree with agree with that completely. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you for for saying saying that. Okay. 
Okay, I know it says an hour. Can we take a five minute break? Yes, we can. Because I didn't think we were going to read every single one. So we're going to take a five minute break. And what I'd like to do, because I do have the team here, I want to make sure we provide a summer update. And I know I have the team that way when we come back off a break, if you don't mind if I jump and allow them to do their summer update, um, bring that forward. So then they, and I know they have other things that are going on. I assume going, they're doing this. So we'll take a five minute break and then um, we'll provide you with a summer update. So the ladies, um, Ms. Townley, Ms. Speaks, and Ms. Everett were all um, a part of Summer, helping develop Summer, and they're going to bring the update from Summer. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Um, just to provide a, a brief um, summary and historical view, where um, we've been, we reintroduced Summer School about five years ago, and since then um, we feel like we've grown tremendously. We've been able to survey our teachers, our principals, our maintenance workers, and food service workers to really find um, what components are working well and what areas do we need to improve. And um, part of that is reflected in the data sheet below. And so we are just encouraged that um, we're doing great things for our kids during summer programs. And with that said, Dr. Speak will share a little bit about um, the data. Good morning. Um, so it, we've broken it up into elementary and middle and then some of the um, bridge programs. So if you look, the first one, it talks about the daily attendance per week. And one thing to note here is that the fourth week split July 4th. Um, so there is usually a decrease there. So that's something we need to talk about for next year and how we want to approach that. But um, numbers were, were good, um, with the exception of that last week where we had the three days because July 4th was um, the number of good cause promotions, you can see we've compared it uh, between 2017 and 2016. These are the good cause promotions from May through current right now for both years from third grade. Thank you. Um, and again, like Michelle had said, we are doing better. We're getting better um, at moving our students. Last year we were at 725 good cause promotions, and this year we had 915. So we have to lose together. Yes. With a couple weeks to go, that's right, because it's through October 31st. Mm -hmm. um, anything else about the last you guys want to let it down? So secondary power, we did it a little different this year. Instead of doing um, the secondary power up at five sites, where all kids went to five secondary sites, we opened it up to 22 sites. And um, yes, yeah, so it was challenging, but we were allowed, we were alloc allocated three teachers per school, and we did see the numbers go up. Um, can't say whether or not that's the reason, but certainly a, a definite improvement in the half credits earned from 2017 to 2016 with those 22 schools. It was probably actually 19, uh, 18 because four of them had only a couple students, so they sent them to a different school. Um, so doing better there as well. So that was a, a good improvement. <laughs> should also note, too, that we did um, change the elementary from 10 sites. We increased it to 15 mm -hmm. this past summer. Um, so again, maybe the numbers are a little lower at specific host sites, but overall the numbers were really good. Um, and that seemed to work well because we were able to get to the four corners. So we inwood, um, frostproof, Fort Meade, Loch Minook, so we were able to get to those corners and, and provide you know, better service for those students. Uh, we did also offer the pre-algebra bridge. It was a non-credit course for kids that were um, wanting to go into algebra this year. And get some, again, some pretty good numbers. It was one teacher at four different sites, and we did have a max of about 25 students. So um, looked really good there. Um, the leadership bridge, we've tried this in a couple different ways. Um, find that that five, six, eight, nine bridge um, is challenging to get students involved. We did offer a half credit for the eighth, ninth graders this year. Um, started off with six schools with a minimum of 15 students per school, but as you can see we only had uh, 20 middle school students completed, 11 high school students complete those courses. So um, just something to note for planning next year. And then we did also offer this year the enrichment program, which was after school physical education and fine arts. Uh, we offered it at four sites that were um, solely Title I sites, and we're able to pay for that through Title I. Uh, anticipated 700 students at those four sites to stay after, so they would go to the Power Up in the morning and then stay at the school for the, the enrichment program. Numbers were down, though. Uh, sat, like after week one, parents were coming to pick up their students after the Power Up program, so um, maybe again taking that into consideration for planning again next year. So um, 
overall looked really good this year. We're improving every year, and you know, we're going to start started in the first. Look at you. Yeah. So. Thank you, ladies. Are there any questions? I just wanted to bring the update because they are going to start um, working and planning for the upcoming summer for our students and looking at some of the areas where we, we figure we didn't do as well and how do we get those either beefed up or what do we do? Is it location? What is it? So they're starting to take a look at that right now as well. Ms. Sellers. Is there any funding issues with the Title I dollars and are we able to work through that? We, we actually work through those. Maria is here with Title I. Um, but I think we, we usually have a pot that we set aside for our That's summer correct. programs early on mm -hmm. to see what we can do with them. This year we switched it up from the previous year because, you know, the previous year we kind of <coughs> sent some bids out where we had some different programs in some of our elementary sites where they produced a the program at the end. So this year it was a little different this summer. Um, seems like we our numbers were better so far with this program, but we do have um, set aside Title I dollars for that for the summer. Okay. So and three that was allowed. Budget. Because we've used the road forward already once. Correct. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're right to, to be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. can, can, through that bill, if it stays, can schools elect to say we want to use part of our money mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. can it be pooled to still provide a district for those schools that would like to participate? Yes, ma'am. Schools okay. can elect to use their Title One allocated funds for their school-based mm -hmm. program, but would not be able to pull together to do a district-level program. And that, so that's the flexibility we have lost. And some okay. of them did that this summer right. on top so, of they mm -hmm. did like a K one mm -hmm. program. Because we only did the three four. There was two three this side. year versus the K. Five. So the kid didn't yeah. voluntarily pool their stuff. They can't even like. 15 That's schools what she was they, Wow. But, well, it, if it's serving only their students at a central site, then they could do that. But you imagine the logistics um, challenges yeah. to that because then because it's, it's specific to child. So many right. third graders, right. and, yeah. and okay. it just becomes quite burdensome. So, um, we, but we've that, tried. Go ahead, Michelle. We've tried to do some of that previously, and what seems to be a better solution is as regionals, as we're working with our schools on their school improvement plans and assisting title our Title I people as they're making their budgets, and they see that they might possibly have some additional funds, planning, beginning to plan and have those conversations now about how they might utilize those funds in the summer. Um, it, it, it is something that we monitor and do, and that, I think that's part of the process of us getting better at this summer school work mm -hmm. is that we are more forward thinking than mm -hmm. we were in years past and starting that process in November um, where you know some years it was as late as March before we started so mm -hmm. through that planning phase um, I think we're able to capture um, as best we can and utilize those dollars to the best of our abilities to serve more students. I have a question <coughs> on the enrichment piece how did you all determine music and PE was it going to be the focus in enrichment program? How was PE and music that was, determined? That uh, was kind of taken um, charge by Beth Cummings, and then she involved Kathy Wright, and so we could kind of move kids through different areas, and it wasn't just one or two teachers. Um, it was just it, that was. I mean, it was yeah, each, each 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 day at, at the four sites that had the enrichment program, they had art, music, PE type themes or mm -hmm. um, processes. I know at Juanita we heavily used the drum beat mm -hmm. um, program and the kids were really engaged with that piece. Um, the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian theme. theme. Mm -hmm. So it, they were our fine arts and physical education teachers, but they built different themed um, projects and lessons, if you will, that were different than what they would do during a typical school year. I just noticed that the participation was down, was it not? Participation yeah, and so I just was wondering mm -hmm. if you all did an assessment of the parents to see what the parents thought of what the kids thought of what the kids would like to see 
different for next summer? Yes, ma'am. Honestly, um, it became a transportation barrier in many cases for our families. Um, the bus, um, Rob and his team was great about um, scheduling a second run of the buses. Um, but um, I know in some areas there, it would start raining in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And because of the rain in the summertime, um, the parents wanted to pick their kids up early so they didn't have to meet them at the bus stop in the rain or walk home in the rain. And so um, the weather, in all honesty, became a bigger factor than what we thought it would be. Um, but we And we did survey some of the kids. Some of them were, um, were just tired and um, were ready to go home. <laughs> you know, and um, so they had a good time, but it, and it's and and I will just reiterate the the fourth week. You know, we've had times where summer school was up to eight weeks long, mm -hmm. and that's pretty taxing on our teachers. And what we saw this year was that um, the quality of work that our teachers were able to provide, because um, the time frame was a little bit shorter. Um, I think that had an impact on increasing our results. Our teachers were more fresh. Um, they had a little more time to plan and prepare and provide enriching lessons for the children. So we know that's something we need to keep in mind as we move forward because it also allows um, our teachers to have a, a time of rest and rejuvenation during the summer if they choose to teach summer school as well so that they can come back fresh um, for the school year. Okay. Mr. Yeah, just uh, two, two, two things. One, I, I really appreciate the sense of like learning and about, about about evaluating what we're doing. You know, I mean, these are all experimental to some degree, and and, and, and to take real hard looks at it and shape shape it and change it. I I, I I appreciate that one. Secondly, can you tell me a little bit about what the leadership bridge class is pra practically? I mean, I know what it says, but like, what's what are the interactions between the t the teachers and kids? It, it was different for each of the schools. Some of them wanted to do their own teacher-developed program. I mean, the course has a specific course description, so it is focused on leadership and um, a lot of the, the civics and social studies pieces. Um, we were able to provide an online program for them just because of the, the quick turnover, so they utilized that as well as teaching you know, the students. So the, the caveat was that they get a half course, half course elective for middle school before they even get to middle school, or a .5 high school credit before they get to high school. Um, just think it, it, we needed more time to plan on that one and to really bring the teachers in and do some training on what our expectations were. It's just a lot of site-based decision making happened there with, between the administrator and the teacher. Do you want to use the curriculum that we were providing or would you like to kind of develop your own in-house curriculum to meet those course descriptions? Yeah, I mean, guess what I'm asking, were, were there some exercise sizes, some sort of challenges that, that are not academically driven that, that, that sort of to, to develop leadership or is it more kind of a here's what we say about, about, about leadership, can you repeat that back to us? I guess that, that's, that's kind of There's what I'm asking. This, this particular piece, um, we've tried in, in multiple ways formats. and formats okay. to make it enriching yeah. to kids. Um, we've even partnered um, with other organizations to provide mm -hmm. STEM activities, um, mm -hmm. even leadership, like how do you give a tour of your school and how would you talk to people cool. about it. Okay. So the, the actual application of the theories of leadership that they're learning right. to how that will play out in their classroom. Um, but this continues to be a challenge mm -hmm. of getting kids to buy into it. Many yeah. of the times kids are doing summer band camp or sports, right. Right. and right. when they get to this age, yeah. and it's not yeah. necessarily in a credit recovery mode, if you right. will, um, it's sometimes challenging they're to choose. Oh. They're choosing um, <laughs> oh, okay. to, to do different okay. things. Mm -hmm. so, okay. um, not not gloves, I'm just curious. Thank you. That's that's help, help, helpful. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And now we'll we will jump back to the financial advisor service, Mr. Perone. And I'm sorry, is she back here? Oh, okay. Good morning. Good morning. We do have one member okay. who is um, unavailable to attend, but I can call him. He is available by phone. If that's that needs to be your approval, I'll just give him a call. Okay. Give me sister. Just a
Hello. Good morning, Mr. Levy. This is Lynn Adams with the Polk County School Board Purchasing Department. You are joining our work session this morning. Hey. All right, thank you. Um, I'll introduce the um, evaluation committee members. We have Jeff Stearns, Treasurer, City of Lakeland. Um, Calvin Bowens, Director of Finance with the City of Winter Haven. David Wright, the Assistant City Manager for the City of Bartow, and David Levy, who is a retired member from Golden Sacks. Um, we have a copy of the of the um, summary for the process that we that was used for the Financial Advisor Services evaluation, and a copy of the. Um, Evaluation scores as the, the committee noted. And so we're here to take any questions that you have about the process. Yes, yes. I noticed there wasn't anything that referenced the scope of work. So I would I'd, I'd be interested in in, in kind of uh, getting a, a better understanding of, of the scoring based on that. Okay. The scope of work was um, outlined in the request for qualifications document that was issued. Um, the, it's several pages, there's a couple of pages of it. The project description was um, to provide advice to the district regarding financial matters related to issuing and refinancing certain types of debt instruments as prescribed by statute including but not limited to general obligation bonds, certificates of participation, tax and revenue anticipation notes and sales tax bonds. Um, there were a number of, of roles that the selected financial advisor would be, we would be looking for them to, to provide, including developing a plan of finance, preparing financing schedules, evaluating legal approaches, permitting various financing structures, reviewing legal documents, analyzing and reporting on advantages and disadvantages of various options, evaluating projected cash flow from any revenue. <laughs> there were um, 16 criteria that um, we were looking for. Well, in the future, if there's a future, in my opinion, this is just mine, it would have been nice to have had that scope as a part of the, um, the backup. Because I, we looked, I looked at the scores, but I wasn't sure what the scope of work was. And the other question that I have is, I noticed that uh, PFM scored very high in capability of performing the work, but the Ford and Associates, one was a three, and one and the others was like four point five or fours. And so in, in in retrospect, when this scoring was done, was any thought uh, given to prior uh, work with the school district or was this just, just like a clean slate when you all did your scoring? Is there anything on the on the uh, information that we got that would have referenced the experience that Ford an associate has had with the school district for numerous years. What they were asked to um, describe their uh, capability to perform the work. They were asked to if their firms had any experience working with Florida school districts um, and to list their Florida school districts that their that their firm represents. So they were given an opportunity to uh, provide any information that they wanted to regarding their qualifications. Mr. Townsend? Sort of picking up on, on Kay's <coughs> point, I, I, and I don't know if this is an appropriate thing to do. I, you know, the capability of performing the work is kind of everything. Um, and it is curious that the biggest difference in the eva 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 evaluation came from one eva evaluator that was you know, the two point difference. I mean, otherwise this is pretty close. I guess I'm, I'm asking, is it possible for someone to explain their, re their, their reasoning for that? Is that an inappropriate thing to ask? Uh, Y'all can tell me if you want. That's our committee 
Mm -hmm. here. Maybe. So right, right. That right. makes that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just curious what accounted for the big gap in whoever evaluator one was. The big gap compared to it to everything else on the on the ability to do to do to do the work. I just wanted to hear a brief ex explanation of that. To be honest with you, I don't know who evaluated well, one was. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. They're alphabetical order. So, so. Uh, Mr. Bowen, you were one. Mr. Levy was two. Mr. Bowen was three. Which one's he asking? And Mr. Wright was four. Capability performing the work. Yeah. Three of them got a five, four got four got a three. I was just curious about the gap. What what accounts for the gap? I, I don't recall to be honest with you. The from my perspective, the firms were very close and they both had many clients, school board clients. Uh, this is kind of a personal service as well as professional service. And we I think the committee was concerned primarily with the fact that how well does would this work with the administration? because they seem to be fairly confident. Mm -hmm. I think, I'm speaking for the group, but let the group chime in, that the reason PFM was selected overall was they seem to have more in-house capability than Ford did. Okay. And, but as far as expertise, client base, you couldn't really make too much of a, a differentiation between the two. So we were concerned that since it is personal service, that we might be selecting somebody, yes, that we're on paper more capable than the other, but that would not necessarily work really well with the administration. So we actually called in one of the administrators from the finance department and asked what the relationship between the two had been, and we were told they were indifferent. That uh, So well, that's the, the reason we then went with PFM, because they seemed to have more, a larger no, capability no. than the Ford. More, yeah. more, resource, more resources to draw from. Okay. And just let me let me back, back up for a second. Thank, thank you for being willing to serve on this. I mean, I, I feel certain we didn't pay y'all. So, so, um, so I, I, I pre, 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 uh, appreciate your willingness to do it, and I appreciate the idea of going outside of us to have the, the committee done, whoever's idea that was. I don't, I don't know if that's a stand, standard thing or not, but that's a good idea. Thank you. That's helpful. Mr. Harris. I'm just curious if any of the evaluators, the cities that you represent, do either one of these organizations, Ford or PFM, uh, work for your cities? PFM works as a financial advisor for the city of Winter Haven. Now, the side of the house that would work with you is totally different. The individuals are different uh, and so forth. But yes, PFM does provide services to the city of Winter Haven. What about the other two? No, not for Lakeland. Not for Lakeland. Not for Parker. Okay. Are there any other questions? Are you going to go to Ms. Hyams' thoughts? I just want to ask the same thing. I don't know if it's necessary. I don't have to leave from here. Thank you. So, Ms. Hedden, Ms. Sellers, you have Well, anything? I just, um, because we've only worked with, uh, for the board that's been here quite a while. I've always been very pleased with the advice we've gotten from Jerry Ford. He has been able, many times he would have to meet one-on-one -on because -one we can't, he can't meet in a, a private setting with more than one of us. Um, he's always been able to explain to me very well difficult situations. I've, you know, the integrity has always been there. So that would only, because it looks like a three is more like average. And I do understand because I know PFM, I know they do excellent work also. So as far as that, but to see a three there um, in that area, I just feel like he's, the experience that I've had mm -hmm. with Ford and Associates, I would, personally, I would think a three would be rather low in this capability of performing the work because he was always very honest. Uh, this is David Levy. Can I make, uh, can I make a comment? Yes. Um, you know, you guys are all kind of, um, you're, you're kind of uh, narrowing in on some of the issues that all of us did uh, when, we, when we graded this. I want, I, I want to just make a comment that 
we created what we saw on paper, and what you see on paper is based on you know what you ask. Uh, you know what the what the what the RFP states were grade we're grading with RFP states, but we can't grade a twenty year relationship or a prior work experience that you have with PFM. And we were you in some respects because there were only two respondents, for and PFM, we felt like uh, you know we felt like uh, there's always the possibility that what's on paper isn't you know isn't sufficient to make a decision. We did ask to speak with uh, the CFO and try to determine uh, uh, a little bit more about uh, your own relationship with the with the two firms. And uh, you know, and what we you know the feedback we got was that they that they that they, they they felt good about both of them. So please be aware that what you're looking at is something that's seen on paper. It can't supplant you know either the experience you had with PFM last year or the 20 year experience you had with Ford. Those are very valuable. Um, those are very valuable uh, inputs to in making a decision, and those, but those are not inputs that we that we have. We don't. We don't. We can't. You know, we didn't have that information when we were doing it. So we really, we really had to kind of, you know, focus only on you know, what was available to us on paper. Well, thank you for clarifying that, David, because that was the question that I was trying to pose to Lynn, and maybe it wasn't clear. But thank you for for clarifying that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in my uh, experience, in my background, I've been through this a number of times, and oftentimes it's difficult to get folks who will bid simply because of the personal relationship that's been established. It's, it's very difficult to overcome those personal relationships. I, quite honestly, since I've been on the board, we've restructured almost $60 million worth of debt. Mm -hmm. We've lowered our interest rate. We've increased our credit rating we've increased cash flow. And that came to us, courtesy of PFM. I mean, they just came to us and said, hey, we've got some things we think will work for you. And it's worked out quite well. So they've been very, uh, in my opinion, very affirmative in, in addressing some of our needs, even though they weren't actually our financial advisors. So I think that speaks volumes, in, in my opinion, about, about the two folks that are on, you know, that are, uh, Come forward with the with these with these bids, if you will. Um, and you know, I, I know we've had a great relationship with Ford, relationship with Ford and Associates, and this is not a condemnation of them in any way, shape, or form. But I think it demonstrates what we've heard here is that PFM has a stronger internal group that's willing to. I mean, they sat down and did that work on their own without knowing that they were going to be get anything out of it. And I think that speaks a lot. Their organization. Okay, thank you. So, what's the next step on this? This is going to be the on the agenda for the I, next board meeting. I believe it moves to the agenda for the next board meeting. Am I correct about that, Lynn and Mike? For the advisor. Well, it's, it, was a, it was an RQ Q. process, mm -hmm. so um, the outcome would be to determine um, the way that the RFQ was written is that we would uh, select enter into a contract with the, the firm that um, was determined to be in the best interest of the board. Typically that's the highest ranking um, mm -hmm. firm in the scoring process. So um, if, if that were the, the board's wish, then we would pursue entering into a contract with um, PFF. <laughs> That's that. <laughs> um, so I believe what, what you're saying, stating, Lynn, is that the board has to come to an agreement that they're willing to enter into a contract with the high school, which is PFM, today, and then you will move forward. Okay. So our, I believe will we take that as consensus, Mr. Bridges, of the board by show of hands today to enter into that so Lynn can move forward? Right. <clears throat> There is nothing on the agenda for a vote today, but the right. board can give you their input uh, so that you can bring a recommendation for Okay. Okay. So I, I look, I'm looking for the board for the input of do we move forward with PFM so that we can bring that as a recommendation. PFM is an excellent company. I understand <coughs> that. I just, um, 
there was, I, at the same time, there was nothing that Ford Associates did that would cause that. I mean, I understand we can change. I just wanted to note that, in my opinion, at least for the information that I was always given and the understanding, mm -hmm. um, they did excellent service for us for those years. Okay. But um, PFM is a, and it's a larger company. Okay. Okay. They're excellent. Okay. I, but my comments would be, uh, I don't know if Ford and Associates was 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 asked to do what PFM was asked to do, and maybe they did. Maybe PFM did come to us, and Ford and Associates did not. I, I have no knowledge of that. I uh, I respect the work that these gentlemen did. Uh, we appreciate you all doing it, uh, but I would have to say I would not be in support of it. Uh, we're not voting. We're just giving our opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, I I, I kind of go back to what Miss Seller said. Ford and Associates have served us well. Um, I've never known them to tell us anything that wasn't uh, in the best interest of our district. And so I don't think we need to change. If something is working, we need to let it work. So, But whatever the majority of the board members are in, are in agreement on, it is what it is. Okay. I agree with moving forward with PFM. Okay. I agree with uh, Kay. I don't feel that this would have uh, risen to the level that it has unless our current financial leadership had uh, chosen to bring in PFM. I think that's the only reason that uh, Ford was uh, on the outside looking in. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wilson? Could you, could you elaborate? I'm not sure I understood. I think when Mike brought in PFM, because he had a previous relationship with them, that's what caused the questions to arise about whether we want to go forward with PFM or Ford. We had had 20 years working with Ford. It seemed like internally there was uh, consistency and uh, support of the advice that was being given by, uh, mm -hmm. by Ford and at the board level. And for whatever me? reason, they were pushed to the side, PFM was brought in. And if I were PFM, I'd have done exactly what they did. I'd tried to kick the door open to shove my foot in by offering something that wasn't asked, and that's exactly what they did, mm -hmm. and that's why they look good right now. Well, I would offer that I have no prior experience with PFM, but what they did was were was relative to questions that I asked Mr. Ford when I met with them. What are some of the things that we can do? I, I, I offered that opportunity for Ford and Associates to open that door, and I didn't get the sense that they were particularly interested. I think he was, because I had that conversation too, and I think he was resting his case on the fact that he had a 20-year working relationship that he had never been told was not positive. Well, no, I'm not saying it's not positive. I'm not suggesting it was not a positive relationship. I guess what I am saying is what can we do to affect uh, our credit situation with the <coughs> district? What are the options? And even suggested some things. Mm -hmm. But that was the response I received was that we, we there's no... I didn't get the sense there was any need for any change, any, anything to be changed, yet here we are and we've made some significant changes. Uh, so I, I'm wondering, and it's just a thought, I'm wondering, I don't know, if, if maybe our staff did offer that to Ford and Associates and they simply weren't interested in, in pursuing anything that was a little more aggressive, uh, that could be more helpful to our school district. So, that's I mean, that could question. be, that's a double-edged sword. That's a good question. Yeah. We need I mean, an answer. Well, I asked. I didn't ask. staff. We need an answer from the staff. I asked that. So I'm telling you from my perspective it happened. Um, but in any case, uh, I, I think that I think it demonstrates a willingness to and, and uh, resources, not just a willingness, but resources to, to move us forward as a district, which is first and foremost our charge. It's not a personal relationship to someone, in my opinion. Mr. Townsend. I mean, uh, nobody is entitled to business. I mean, this is a competitive pro process. Uh, I thank the staff for bringing things forward. Um, I don't have a dog in this fight. I don't know either of these pe people. Uh, I, I like the fact that they came forward with some ideas. Um, we, we asked these nice pe people to, to eva evaluate them both. They gave us a number. We, we got way too many we've done this for years and 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 years, and years, and years this way here and 
I mean, I, I, this just seems like common sense governance. Let people compete for the public's money, and then when they compete, uh, pick the winner based on a legitimate selection cri criteria. Now, if something goes wrong, fine, we'll take we'll take the heat for that. But what's wrong with this pro process? I, I I I'm baffled by the fact that this is even controversial. So anyway, I'm I'm for moving forward. Okay. Ms. Fields? I'm not going to be back and forth with it, but we have the right to voice our opinion. We might not agree, but we all have a right to voice our opinion. And what works for one might not work for the other. And Ms. Cunningham sent a text message to Mr. Bridges, to Ms. Jackie, to Ms. Susan and I. And I think that Mr. Bridges, you or Susan or Ms. Jackie need to read her message because it needs to be on the record. Do you have it, Susan? Mm -hmm. If the financial, I would like to be on record somehow in favor of Ford and Associates. Okay, so I think at this point, um, staff has heard all the um, information brought forward, and then at the next meeting, we'll bring the recommendation to the board. Sorry to Mr. waste Mr. Wasted your time, fellas. I, I don't know what to say. Sorry. Mr. Wilson? I, I'd just like to say thank you for your time, for your service to our, to our district. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We have. Yes, we have. I think it was four three. I'm trying to miss it. It's four three. Joanne has a recommendation noted. Could you um, say the recommendation out loud, Joanne, based on what the board? Um, those for Ford and Associates was Kay Fields, Tim Harris, Lori Cunningham, Hazel Sellers could go either way. PFN was Sarah Beth Wilson, um, Lynn Wilson, and Billy Townsend. Okay. So we just really need a decision. Now, I want to make sure the record reflects that the board is not taking action mm -hmm. at this work session, that there will be a subsequent recommendation placed on an agenda for action at a board meeting. They're both excellent companies. I, I really think the superintendent brings us recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I, Mike, very, we had excellent service from Ford and Associates. I, in my opinion, for the years that I have served, I never had, I never questioned, I never understood. I really don't know what happened. I, PFM is also an excellent company. Excellent. They're probably the two best. You didn't get any other um, people in because those two would be fine with me. I just didn't want it ever to appear that we went out because we were unhappy with Ford and Associates, but I believe the recommendation comes from you, so, um, and staff. We will bring forth the recommendation at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we have, we're back into information items, but I know Melissa's here with Lakeland Montessori. Yes. Melissa. Thanks, David. Sorry. Good morning. I think David might be hung up. Morning. Uh, Good morning. Lakeland Montessori Schoolhouse, which is an elementary school, it serves 102 students. It was built in 2004. They have um, now earned high performing status with the state, and so they are requesting to modify their current charter application to extend it to 15 years. So, um, attached to the agenda is their letter requesting the modification to their charter, which is pretty standard to get these often. Uh, we now have 14 high-performing charters out of 27 charter schools in Polk County. So this is a, becoming quite a, something that we see often. Um, attached as well is the letter from the uh, Commissioner of Education uh, congratulating them on their high-performing status. And then um, the modification to their charter would read, um, uh, that the, the change would be that their contract would cover 15 years and it would begin 
July 1st of 2014, which is their current contract, and it would extend through June 30th, 20 through uh, 2029. Uh, normally, what happens with these is um, they do have to be approved by the board, so they would um, be part of the um, regular agenda during the next board meeting. Mr. Wilson. Well, I certainly have no objections to, to uh, amending the contract, but I, I am a little curious. I mean, I understand they're now entitled to the additional years, but they didn't seem to provide a reason indicating as to why they needed the additional years. I mean, if they came back to us and said, with, that, with those additional years in the contract, we can negotiate better terms with our bank or something like that, it's understandable. And again, I'm not opposed to it. I'm, I'm just right. wondering. What, did they offer a reason other, no, other than statute, just becoming high performing? Yeah, statute uh, allows them to just come and request. There doesn't have to be any need for it. It gives them the statutory right to request the extension of the, of the contract. And Mr. Wilson, I might be able to clarify. The, the charter law, of course, it, it's grown and grown and grown until it's 40 pages long or something, and you have to reread it every time you, you try to, to interpret it. But there, there's always been a provision to allow a charter school of any stripe to request a 15-year contract in support of long-term financing for capital building or uh, construction. The high-performing statute allows them to request it, and but they do not have to articulate a reason. It just simply says, because they're high-performing. Mm -hmm. okay. Mr. Harris. Just to delve a little bit deeper, they might not be required, but did they voluntarily share one? No. And you didn't ask? No, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Townsend? It seems like it's common sense. It makes them more stable. You don't have to worry about the I, I, if I If I were them, I'm sure I would ask, too, just for the basics So why would you not do it? Like, you know, I, 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 it's a good little school. My son went there for a long, a long time. Um, you know, it's enrollment cur curated like all the others, but it's 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 a nice op option. Um, one, one quick question, and this this for another time. But is there any way to bring a Montessori themed school to a school that we run? Could I mean, is that something we could do? At, you know, as a for for a zone okay. school, just just a thing to think about. Because I, mm -hmm. I don't I don't have to have an answer here, but you know, I know that, that people have asked about that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that'd be a cool idea. Maybe Carolyn's office could have some, some ability to do something like that. That would be in her office. I, I seem to recall a news story about about such a thing being in existence. There is. Um, so I think the, the district has a great deal of discretion in determining what sort of programs they wish to offer in their schools and to the extent that it is not a, a, a faith-based program, right. it would be permissible. Mm -hmm. There are districts that do have Montessori programs that are designated within the, um, their own school districts. There are. And we now okay. have four charter Montessori schools. Yeah. But these will be public, is what we're speaking of. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'll just make one, one last comment. Um, so extending their contract 15 years, the part of the new statute language for this year requires that districts um, review uh, charter schools every five years because we now are seeing more 15-year contracts. Um, our five-year reviews are fairly rigorous. They include a site visit. So one of the things that I would hope to kind of maybe dispel any maybe trepidation in the fact that we have these 15-year contracts is that district staff, there's a team of us that actually go into the schools, we do site visit, we pull HR records, we look at their finances, um, which that's done every month anyway, but we do it at a very detailed level. Um, we talk to staff, we visit classrooms, so it, just, just for the sake of thinking through a 15-year contract and what that means, all of our charter schools go through a five-year review um, at, at that interval. So, yes, also, every year we look at their finances and their oh, academic mm -hmm. progress. So, even with a 15 year contract, a school's not going to get out of control with their finances or their academic achievement. Is that? That's correct. That's absolutely correct. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you for that clarification. Okay. okay. Thank you, Melissa. Next up, Ms. Porteous will come in with the Hurricane Storm makeup time.
as an, as an information item. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, on May 24th, 2016, <coughs> excuse me, the board approved a calendar for the 17-18 school year. Uh, as you know, due to Hurricane Irma, we lost several days of instructional time. And so in order to protect the holidays for and time off for all of our employees, um, we extended early release days. And we did this in consultation with PEA. And so those dates are October 11th, November 15th, January 24th, February 7th, March 14th, and May 16th. And so those are now full days. Um, so I just needed to bring that to you all because you, you did approve the original calendar. Ms. Reynolds. I just want to say thank you because I think that was a very innovative and creative solution to not having to give up our Thanksgiving or Christmas or spring break or those other holidays where our, our personnel and our students already have plans to go out of town and visit family. So I greatly appreciate and I know our staff and students do too. So thank you. You're highly coveted. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, questions. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I did see Maddie. Hi, Maddie. There you are. And Maddie did get some exciting news recently about the grant, the other grant. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm excited to say that once again, um, the Head Start program was approved on a small grant, $180,000. Congratulations. And that's just mm -hmm. nice to know. And it came from the project of excellence. So that was awesome. Mm -hmm. um, our Head Start services are continuing to grow. We are in our ninth year of service. And I did want to tell you um, that there may be some significant impact from our, our Region 1 section, that is Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. um, and we have requested um, the documentation that indeed, if we do have other students attending from um, in Polk County from Region 1 Head Start in Puerto Rico, where uh, we've asked that our funds be extended so that we can service those children. We don't know how that will work. We did sustain some damage at the 20 some odd classroom, I mean, offices at Woodlake. There was only one that was damaged. Um, <laughs> and, but in our schools, uh, pretty well went unscathed. And so we're not receiving big bucks from the uh, feds to fix those issues. I did want to tell you that our classrooms will be audited this school year. How wonderful. We always love audits. Um, it will be a five-fold audit. In our first audit will be fiscal and HR. Um, so that's the two areas that we are concerned about right now. But I believe um, that we don't get ready for an audit. I believe we stay ready. So that's where we are right now. Um, Ms. Reynolds has been uh, an active member of our um, policy council, and we just sat the new policy council. So everything seems mm -hmm. to be going on record. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I just, Ms. Sellers? Um, I was just reading, and I know there's, maybe it's ESC money. It said that there's 942 grant funded enrollment, but we served 990. Yeah. So mm -hmm. is that the... Yes, that's ESE. a partnership with um, uh, ESE pre-kindergarten to make sure that our children that have IEPs that support an inclusive process, we're supporting that for that individual child. It seems to work very well, especially with those students that have IEPs related to speech language, language acquisition, articulation. Um, we have seen some significant issues this year with some of our children that we just met, right? You know, they didn't come through early steps. They didn't come through some real significant issues. Um, and I'm rather concerned with the number of those students that we have this year. Um, but again, that's what we're here for, to buffet, to provide a buffer between home and kindergarten. So we're hoping to discharge appropriately what those children Thank you. Mr. Wilson? I'd just like to thank Mrs. Street for her mm -hmm. leadership in that program. It's a remarkable program, and I know our board members have served on that um, on that board. And the, the parental involvement is inspirational, it really is. It's incredible to see that the parents have come mm -hmm. out to support that program. So 
Thank you for leading that. Thank you. If there are no other questions, that concludes our meeting for today. Thank you. Thank you.